This is already the third video in our series about why you definitely should and how you can get started with the Google Analytics 4 expert to BigQuery. If you've missed any of the previous videos, you may want to go back to it right now. Today, I'm going to show you how to write some basic queries to start extracting event information from your G4 data in BigQuery. How you can do it all yourself or how you can use ChatGPT to craft those queries for you. Hey there, I'm Yevgen. You are at Our Marketing Analytics with Our Day YouTube channel where we speak all things about marketing, analytics and data. On this channel, we help you do more with your data so you can tell a better story of your business's success. So, if you are all about making decisions based on data, my friend, please subscribe to this channel and enable notifications so you don't miss any of the answers. With this being said, let's dive right in. If you have already set up the GE4 BigQuery Expert, you probably have a ton of questions about what's next. So one of the first things you might want to do with your data is to build a report to see what events are actually being collected and what happened on your website. In order to do this, you'll need to query your data. Let's look at how this query process looks in practice. It's actually quite simple. I'm going to be sharing a sample dataset by Google just for simplicity. You can practice with it as well if you want. You can find the link to the sample dataset in the description to the video right below. First, let's look at which events are you collecting from your website. What was the number of times each event occurred on your website? I'll use a simple query to make this happen. And by the way, you can find this and another queries in the collection of queries I've prepared for querying G4 data in the description to this video. So, back to our query. Here is how it looks. We'll select the event name and the count of rows in the table from this specific table in our dataset. We'll group them by the event name and order by the number of each event occurred descending. Let's run that in BigQuery and see what happens. As you can see now, we got a list of the event names which has been collected as well as the number of times each of those events happened. Now, when you know the numbers, you can start writing other queries that might target those specific events. If that sounds complicated, we've created the ChatGPT app, your SQL AI Copilot. Just go to your ChatGPT account, search for OWAC SQL Copilot for BigQuery and start querying your data. I have recorded a separate video about it that you can watch right here. In the previous query, we have retrieved the data from all of the tables, meaning all of the dates that you've collected your data from Google Analytics into BigQuery. When you perform an analysis on a static date range, you should use fixed start and end dates. Let's say we need to analyze January 2021. My data set by Google is pretty old. Every day Google Analytics 4 data in BigQuery in store is stored in the separate table. So there are two options here. First one is called wildcard. We are using star when we need to select any value. For example, we can use events underline star to query all of the tables in our dataset. Or we can use events underline 2021 star to query all of the tables for the year 2021. Or we can use events underline star 2021 01 to query all of the tables for January 2021. And finally, we can use events underline star 2021 010 to query all of the tables for the first nine days of January. Instead of using the wildcard, we can also use the where clause just after the table details. The table suffix soda column would specify the dates for which we need to get our data from. So, where table suffix between January the 1st and January 31st, 2021. Let's run and see the number of events that occurred is lower than before. That's it for the static date range. But what if you want to write a query to analyze the dynamic date range, let's say the last 30 days? In this case, we need to select a rolling 
last 30 days period. Today minus 30 days until yesterday. You can see the line on your screen right now. So you can use static dates, dynamic days for a rolling period, for example the last 7 or 30 days or any number you wish. Or you can combine static and dynamic dates. For example, you can grab the data for January 1st, 2021 up until yesterday. Next, traffic details. If you need to arrange the default traffic sources of your acquisition, of your user acquisition, you can run our next query. So we'll select the traffic source dot source, traffic source dot medium, and traffic source dot name. We'll use this little dot between the traffic source and the name of the field because those fields are hidden inside the main one. And we'll add the total users count as the metric. We'll use user pseudo ID to calculate the number of users. We'll need to also group everything by all of the traffic dimensions one by one. And I'll order it by the number of users descending. Here you can see the results on my screen right now. Now, you might want to query specific events data. Let's say you want to query your BigQuery to retrieve some specific data about the page view events. We're going to use the WHERE clause here again. We're going to select star, that means we're going to select all columns from our simple table, where event name equals page view. You'll see now. It returns first 100 rows and all of the columns where the event name is equal to page view. You might want to filter the data by, let's say, country United States. Again, we'll use the same WHERE clause here. We just type in AND geo.country and in quotes United States. We'll list out all the events that we want to include, the table suffix, and you'll see here we have, we've again returned all the da data for a hundred rows and all the columns, but only where the event name is equal to page view and the location is United States. Please be aware that selecting all columns of all tables in your dataset by using a star is not a good practice. Depending on the amount of events collected, querying a large amount of data can lead to con considerable costs. And there you have it. A quick journey through the GA4 simple queries for you to use and start exploring your data today. If this video has added value to your journey, please show your support by liking and sharing this video. Leave a comment below if there is something specific you'd like to know more. We have only scattered the surface here. Please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our next videos where we will cover how to query event parameters, how to build standard GA4 reports in BigQuery avoiding data sampling, what tools you can use to visualize the data you retrieve from BigQuery, Google Sheets, Looker Studio, how to do that, what are the benefits, and so much more. Your engagement fuels my passion to share more insights about analytics. We are here to guide you every step on the way you enable your data. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Yevgen from OVAX and remember, data always makes sense. So by next time, stay data-driven, keep exploring, the opportunities your data brings into your business.